Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and today I want to talk about this little camera which is the ASI 533MC Pro and I want to make a review of it. Uh, the only difference with other reviewers is that this is a review for this camera in a white zone. So I am in Tokyo, there's a lot of light pollution and this is a one-shot color camera, right? So it has a Bayer matrix on the sensor to get the color information which is in theory a no-no for white zones. In white zones, the recommend recommendation for pretty much everybody is to use a monochrome camera, a black and white sensor basically, with um, red, green, blue and luminance filters uh, so that you can get like actually more information per channel. There's a very good reason in that in an, a one-shot color camera, only one pixel out of four is covered by a red filter and also by a blue filter. Uh, and two out of four covered by a green filter. Uh, whereas in most of the targets we try to image, there's very little green. So there's something kind of weird going on uh, there. And you lose information, you lose resolution as well, to some extent when you're using a one-shot color sensor. And even though you're using uh, a single like sensor to expose all of your time, you're getting um, overall in equivalence, less exposure time than with an equivalent monochrome sensor with LRGB filters, which is a huge obstacle, especially in white zones, when you need as much exposure time as possible to counter the noise that is basically created by uh, the light pollution. And this little camera has been awesome for me. So let me uh, remove it from my, from my setup here so you can see a bit how it looks like. So this is a very standard ZWO camera actually, overall. It has, you know, the uh, usual USB hub. So here it is. You have the USB hub with uh, two USB 2.0 ports that I use for my uh, autofocuser and for my filter wheel, which are both from ZWO as well. Um, we have the main USB 3.0 a plug for the uh, computer link and then we have the 12 volt input here plus the fan and the fan enclosure. Now the uh, ca this camera is not designed to work without 12 volts with other cooled cameras so this is cool so that wait what okay we had normally a little uh, black thing there that covers the screw on the side this is the first time that happens to me it just eh, fell off whatever I don't think it's a big deal but <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, there could be <laughs> quality issues, I don't know, but it's a great camera, just trust me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you need to actually connect this camera to DC 12 volt for it to work well with the computer. With other cold cameras, you could um, avoid using this 12 volts if you just wanted to use it uncooled, but I do not recommend that. One of the main things you'll notice with this camera is the sensor is square. We have a square sensor. It's 3,008 pixels per 3,008 pixels. It's, uh, what if, uh, what is it? Uh, 3.76 microns per pixel. If I remember correctly, the diagonal is basically one inch and it's square. I think it was made for like 360 cameras originally. And it's awesome. It's absolutely great because um, I get such good results. So let me actually get to my computer and show you a bit more about that. So see you in a moment. And here we are. Uh, right now I'm showing you a bit like how this uh, camera is placed in uh, ZW's lineup of cameras. We can see it here. It is comparatively very cheap compared to even the 294MC Pro, which I've owned in the past. And at least from my white zone, the 533MC Pro is clearly, without a doubt, the superior camera in almost all respects except the field of view. Uh, the 2954MC Pro works great in slightly dark areas like up to Bortle 7, 8. Afterwards, it becomes really a struggle to work with. Calibration can be very hard. It's a bit of a temperamental camera when you have a poor signal to noise ratio to start with. When you have a very good signal to noise ratio, all the imperfections of that camera are hidden by your good signal to noise ratio. But when you get into a white zone, you start to hit a wall with the 294MC Pro. Uh, that is not the case for the 533MC Pro. It's a much tamer camera, even though it's very sensitive. Um, the advantage of the 294MC Pro is that it has a wider field of view 
and it has bigger pixels, so it has more sensitivity to uh, to incoming like photons per per pixel area. Uh, the disadvantages of the 294 is it's it can be hard to calibrate properly with dark frames and flat frames in particular like low exposure times can be like not super constant so you want your flat, flat frames to be like two or three seconds there there's all sorts of little caveats with the 294 mc pro that you do not have with the 533 mc pro uh, the 294 also has a big amount of amp glow which is kind of a pattern that you see on the dark frame for the 294 it's easy to remove with dark calibration so using dark frames calibration uh, but something that everyone always forgets to mention is that in the area that had the amp glow you reduced effectively your dynamic range and you also get poorer signal to noise ratio so it's not like magically removed by darks it's aesthetically removed by darks Com cosmetically it doesn't appear anymore but the area under that amp glow is actually affected by poorer signal to noise ratio something to remember that amp glow is not visible with the 533 mc pro which is great so if we go and look at the specs of the 533 mc pro we can see it's the square sensor one inch so it is fairly small and it means the scope you are, you are pairing it with is important for my seeing in tokyo which is terrible most of the time i find that my eight inch f3.8 700, 760 millimeters focal length is great it's a perfect perfect match for this camera and you'll see i managed to um, frame the leo triplet uh, galaxies in a single shot it actually made the uh, ASI uh, image of the week um, a, a few weeks ago so I was super happy about that it's it's a great little camera really um, the, the ADC the uh, analog to digital converter is 14 bit which is great it's, it gives a bit more space to work with uh, and a bit less of quantiz quantization error and noise um, the read noise is crazily low and it's using a back illuminated CMOS. There's, everything is awesome with this camera. If we look a bit more at the specs, you can see that at the unity gain, so gain 100, suddenly you get more dynamic range and you get much less read noise. Which means that by all means you should always use it above unity gain or at unity gain. I personally set my gain to 101 just to make sure that I'm above unity gain and I, I take advantage of the whole camera features. It should work at 100 exactly the same but I'm superstitious and I prefer to use uh, 101. And as I was talking, the amp glow is... Uh, this is a camera with M glow it might have been the 183 MC or MM Pro maybe yeah, I think it's the 183 it might be uh, another one but you can see the comparison on the ZW website with that camera and I checked it and I'm gonna show you that in a second okay so you need to pair it with the right telescope you need to get the right field of view you get the right, the right pixel size I will not go into the details in this video others have covered that much better than I ever could but let's look first at the cooling performance. So right now I'm going on my uh, astrophotography computer, which is upstairs, as, um, uh, accessing it remotely. And I am going to connect to my camera. And you can see that the chip temperature is currently at 22 uh, Celsius. Let's try if, to see if we can cool this camera to minus 10 degrees Celsius and how long it is going to take. So uh, I am going to display the clock. We are at 12.38 and 45 seconds p.m. And I'm going to launch the cooling and we'll wait until uh, that cooling is uh, done, if it gets done, to give you an idea of how long it takes and also how efficient it is. Right now we're trying to cool more than 30 degrees past uh, below ambient, which is quite a, quite a bit. So um, I'll be right back uh, with you. And here we are, just uh, around four or five minutes later. It's uh, 12.43 now. And uh, you can see the cooler is, is pretty much taxed with 94%, 93% uh, cooler utilization. But I've reached my target of minus 10 degrees uh, Celsius, starting from 22 degrees, almost 23. I think it's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. It's pretty fast. It cools well. There's no issue from there. I know that others 
pro different cameras from ZW. We've heard about issues cooling really to the max, but here there's really uh, no problem that I could find. So this is uh, working great on the cooling. Now I want to look a bit at uh, the camera performance, in particular with calibration frames and with actual exposures and results taken from here a white zone. And here we are in PixInsights and I'm looking at a dark frame, um, actually like uh, an average of dark frames, so my master dark for this camera uh, using 30 second exposures at minus 10 degrees. And uh, this is the before the bearing, so it doesn't look like much. Uh, this one on the right is the one that's uh, debayered, where we can actually see the real shape of that master dark. And it's amazingly clean. Uh, this is, I think, uh, 50 uh, darks. It's, uh, it's beautiful. I mean, there are hot pixels here and there, which is normal for this type of camera, but there's no, like, there's no amp glow at all that is visible. Uh, and it's a very, very clean dark frame. And immediately you can see that it's going to be a pleasure to deal with this camera. The only thing I'll say is because of the number of more or less hot pixels, you want to make sure you calibrate just in case, and you also want to dither. Dithering is a game changer for astrophotography, and I recommend at every twist and turn of the road. It's absolutely critical and will be very useful with uh, this camera. So this is how the uh, dark frame looks like. It looks great. Now, I'll, uh, I'll show a bit a flat frame as well. So this is uh, Bayard and this is the Bayard here, the one on the right. And flat frames, well, they tell more about my optical system than they do about uh, the camera. But I will say that with the 294 MC Pro, my fa flat frames had a motley kind of appearance. Um, and they actually, I, I got better results uh, without flat flat calibration than I did with flat calibration with the 294 MC Pro. And this is likely due to my poor signal to noise ratio. So I need to pump the signal a lot when I do my processing because I'm in a white zone. And the 294 doesn't like that at all uh, because of this like kind of very low threshold noise, but noise nonetheless. It's very low frequency noise. So it's not like thermal noise, something like that. And this kind of noise is completely absent from this 533. And it's again, a very beautiful kind of looking uh, flat. There are some kind of horizontal lines that I see there. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it's actually my uh, electro, uh, my uh, flat panel, or it could be the camera. Uh, either way, it's very, very small and it did not affect my final images at all. So I'll show you a bit what a single frame looks like uh, for me. So this is a single frame. On the left, we have the Bayard frame. On the right, we have the debayered frame. And the one on the top here, this is uh, without any calibration of any kind. This is a single 30 second exposure in a Tokyo white zone. You can see that it doesn't look uh, bad at all. And we could actually make it uh, look even better was maybe like, you know, uh, we, we could do some quick processing on this image. Just do a photometric color calibration which can be followed by a masked stretch, uncalibrated single frame, uh, to give you an idea of the quality of this, uh, of this camera. So I'll just do, and here's my single exposure from a white zone after a masked stretch. And we could do some curves uh, transformation to pump up the, uh, uh, the contrast and the saturation again from a single frame. Right, so uh, let's do some contrast enhancement here. Um, it's not awesome, but again, this is a single frame and then we can pump the saturation a little bit. Um, and we can see how this looks like. Actually, it's probably better, but you see, this is single frame. It's uncalibrated and we can see quite a bit of detail from the M13 cluster here. So I think it's a very positive sign for this camera that with an uncalibrated frame, I can get such good results. And this is again from a Tokyo white zone. So let me close this and we can have a look down here at post calibration and post calibration. I don't know, it, it just looks perfect to me for a single frame. In a, in a white zone, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's great. It's absolutely great. And uh, I think it, it, it worked 
very, very well uh, for, um, for my white zone. And based on that, we can actually look at the final stacks that we get. And these are all from my Tokyo white zone. These are the unprocessed simple uh, screen transfer function applied um, of my like of my images of my stacks typically it's like maybe this one is 300 frames for example of 30 seconds um, this one is I think over two nights and I have around 1000 frames of 30 seconds each both galaxy um, this one is the Leo triplet which the process version got me uh, um, an image of the week from ZW or from ASI uh, Facebook community. Um, this one is M51, again from my white zone, with just 500 exposures. Um, the lid triplet was around 1,500. But this, I don't know, it's, it, to me it is amazing that I am able to get such a good result from such a white zone uh, that I am with an OSC sensor. And to be clear, this is without any luminant, uh, any light pollution filter. I only have a simple luminance filter. I don't remember whether it's from ZW or Optolong, one of the two, but, and this is like yet another one that I think 1000 exposures or so, 30 seconds stacked together. And I think it looks very good. And any of the issues with those streaks there, I think they're not linked to the camera, they're linked either to my optics or to the weather and, and streaming clouds, for example. And I am amazed by the results with this camera. So now let's look a bit at some of the uh, end results that I got with the camera. So overall, I think this camera is, is an absolute gem. You get excellent results from a white zone. Some, some things I had never you know, believed would be even possible here in Tokyo. And I am blown away by this camera. This is something I never was able to achieve with the 294 MC Pro. Uh, even though the 294 MC Pro gave me some excellent results in Yosemite and Death Valley for example, so in a very, very dark areas. But I think this little camera is amazing. I highly recommend it. I would recommend it over the 294 to anyone who lives like in a Bortle 8, Bortle 9 zone. And uh, I hope this, I mean, really, really a gem. So highly recommend it. Um, and thank you so much for watching. If you like this, click like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of my future reviews on gear. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much.